What's up, guys? Let us know where you're, com you're coming from. Hey, what's up, Ralph from uh, Jacksonville, Florida? I'm just using some 600 grit right here, uh, sanding it wet. This is just one of the small practice lime line hoods. Scuffing it down. Make sure we got good adhesion. So that's, uh, yeah, pink going to stick to it. So looks like that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and take some glass cleaner. Just regular, any kind of glass cleaner. Yeah, right on, guys. Thanks for joining. All right, so looks like I got that scuff down pretty good. Got the gloss knocked off of it. It's going to give us a good adhesion for the paint to lay down, too. Um, if you don't do that, you'd probably end up peeling your paint edges, but, uh, okay. So let's get right into it. What we're going to do is something, we're going to do something similar to this. Um, we're going to go with the pink in the middle. Um, but the, it's kind of the same way I, I laid this out with the same textures, uh, but, uh, something a little bit different here. So you can kind of see what we're, what we're shooting for. Um, instead of having it, the, the gold pinstripes will have it uh, be the black and you'll see how that's done by laying out the tape um, laying out the design and then towards the end we will figure out what colors we want to put where and then what colors will go together which that'll be really important so make sure you stick around to the end because you know it's it's really important you're matching some of these colors up because you're not wanting to put um you know say like uh blues with greens and stuff like that uh and but uh we'll go over that in a, here in a minute but we're gonna go ahead and mix up the colors we need now that we have the panel all prepped up. Um, but uh, something really cool I'm gonna show you here. So this is the packaging it comes in. Um, basically it's a base coat pigment. It's it, We pour it into clear base coat or inner coat clear and it makes, it's the actual pigment. Um, this stuff is ground down so fine that we're able to spray it through an airbrush, no problem. We didn't be able to do detail work, which I did last week with Frankenstein. I think I used the same stuff. In fact, I know I did. Uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and get some of this mixed up so you can see how that goes about. So we'll get some cups lined up. We have the lime line. You can use any kind of clear base coat or inner coat clear, whatever you're going to use. Um, if it's clear, it works it work better, I guess. But you can also put it to base coats, I guess. It, all this stuff can be mixed um, and customized. You can mix them together. But mixing with clear base is going to give you that color, that exact color we're looking for. Okay, I put about a... These are three-ounce cups, so I think I put about an ounce in each of those. Um, I know that I'm mixing up way too much right now. So, um, this is going to be two ounces sprayable, but, um, yeah, I probably should have mixed up a little bit less than what I poured in there, but you'll learn. You can always mix up more. Also, if you put a lid on it, this stuff doesn't go bad. Well, it does go bad, but it stays good for a while. Okay, first color we got here is the uh, 90s green. This is just a bright, bright green. We'll go ahead and pull the top, top off of that. You can see that. All right, they do come with these filters because it's, uh, it's important to make sure that you filter it after you after you mix it up here. So what we'll do, 
Take one scoop. So what the uh, mixing ratio here is, is a one, I'm sorry, uh, one scoop per one ounce sprayable. So we have two ounces in there, we did two scoops. So there's the green. We got the yellow. Same thing, two scoops. And then we do need, we have the blue already. Um, I did pre-mix, well, we still do need the blue actually. Well, we do need the purple. We got purple here. And if you don't, if you don't remember exactly what I said here, all the instructions are right here. So uh, one scoop equals one ounce, pretty easy. So two ounces in there. Somebody said, when you're doing a set of tins, how do you calculate how much you'll use so you don't have to make more so it all matches? He's new to painting, so just wondering. I would just mix up a little bit at first. Um, if you're airbrushing, you don't need that much. If you're spraying with a gun, you need more. So it's kind of a question that I could, really couldn't answer for you because I'm not sure how you're going to paint it. But uh, me personally, I just mix up usually cupfuls, I guess. You know, you have to, it's, you'll just have to learn it. This one's almost empty, so well, not quite that much. There we go. All right. Mix these up really good. We're going to strain it, so. I'll just mix it up good enough. I'll know it'll be clean. Look at this, I'm two handing it. You can see how opaque that is. And the last one here is the yellow. And for the sake of time, I already pre-mixed a couple of them. My purple go. Also purple, blue. Where'd the blue go? I think I have some blue in here. I have some blue in here left over from I think last week or the week before. So I'll use this blue. Okay, so now I got my colors. Um, those are all mixed up, ready to go. It wasn't too hard. We just mixed it up one scoop per uh, one ounce. So two scoops, two ounces here. 
Um, not all of them are reduced where we need it. We're not really worried about it yet. Uh, we'll worry about that here in a second. Um, but next, we'll go ahead and get the graphics laid out. We'll put this paint to the side and kind of move on from there. All right, the panel's clean. Um, let me know in between any of this, if you guys have any questions, but um, I'm gonna use the eighth inch tape and the way we're gonna lay this out is whatever I, wherever I lay the tape down is what's gonna stay the black. So, uh, oh, well, made a mess of that. There we go. I'm wearing gloves, we're all right. So I'm gonna take some of the, the eighth inch And what I'll do is I have two style lines right here in the hood. So I'll go ahead, start on the edge there and then maybe just follow. Follow that right there. And then maybe I'll just do, cause I like to do like when I first start these, um, like you'll see in the description, I kind of explained it a little more. Um, I kind of do like a slash pattern. You can you can do whatever you want, but that seems like that's the style of, you know, you can do the cheese grade kind of stuff on it too. And I'll, I'll show you that here maybe on one of these. But uh, having like go back and forth overlapping, that's the kind of what we're going for. So I'm just going to follow this one. Like I said, I'm just going to Z off of this and see if I can make something that looks good here. So a couple questions. Someone's asking, um, how long will the paint keep in the bottle? Uh, it depends on what kind of bottle it is. Uh, if, it, if it's still tight, it'll stay for a few, a few months. months. And then somebody's asking, when you tape with the thicker tape or the wider tape, how do you keep the rounded corners from creating creases? Well, what you try to do is not do those hard corners with the thicker tape. If you got those tough corners that are really sharp, leave them for the, the thinner tape. And maybe you do want a thicker line there, but sometimes it's the, thin, the thinner holds better around the corners. Okay, maybe I'll just come off right here. Let's do that. That looks good. Cody Daniel said, "Wish he was oh, going to." This? Cody Daniel said, "Wish he was going to SEMA with us." But oh, maybe we wish we were with you. Aren't you in Cancun? <laughs> Dang, it snowed here, so it's cold. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. I'm, I'm going to change my gloves here because, as you can see, I made a mess of uh, paint. But we'll fix that real quick. Just going to take a little bit of reducer on a rag. Clean this up because... Oh... Yeah, be careful with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that loosened that up, like the plastic on that a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna clean that with some glass mirror. We'll see what it's. Yeah, you see what the reducer did? It um, lost that back up. Let me go ahead and let me scuff it. I don't want it to look funky right there, you know? But that definitely loosened that, back, that plastic up a little bit.
something right there, huh? Yeah, wherever I touched it. Given for a second. Okay, sorry about that. Kind of got off track a little bit. All good. All right, back to the taping. That looks good. That flows good, I guess. Could have been a little more rounded there, but it's okay. Uh, what we'll do is maybe come off of this edge. And uh, maybe, yeah, we'll go ahead and leave that there. Maybe, let's see, let's go ahead and just follow this line right here. Now it's all right. And then maybe we'll, uh, let's see, we're just going to kind of lay out tape and some. So I would like for it to come, like have a little bit of overlap. Well, maybe we'll overlap just one of them. That way you can see how that's done. But um, maybe this one will just come to a point. Somebody asks, do you have any idea on how many times you taped patterns like this before it starts to become fluent? Or do you just start off without a plan every time? Um, I usually start out, well, I have like the, the, the style I want to go for. But no, I mean, sometimes I do the same stuff. Because like on a Harley tank, it's, it always seems like the teardrop on the side is the best way to go. And then a lot of it ends up kind of being the same. But um. As far as this go, I just try to look for ways that I can do something cool and work around some of the things. Like if we were to take a line straight over this, it's going to look funky. So we have to kind of work around those things. I mean, you could and get away with it. And it'd probably still look okay. But you know, considering this design is kind of wild and, and kind of all over the place. So if it did bump over that, it wouldn't. But me, I like to try to keep it cleaner. But no, I really don't. I don't have really any plan. This looks like a W. I didn't plan on this looking like a W. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and drop this one right here. So we'll cut here, cut here. And then cut here. We'll go ahead and pull these off because that's going to drop up underneath. Someone said, will the Iwata Ninja Jet Compressor Studio Series work for airbrushing tanks, etc.? Yeah, airbrushing tanks for sure. You're going to need a full-size gun in order to spray clear and base coat and stuff still, but that's what I use. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm definitely not going to do another W there, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, that looks all right. I mean... That looks, that's going to look good. I'm not worrying that. I'll go ahead and follow this ridge right here because there's really not much more we can do. We just kind of create a panel here because once again, we're going to be laying in color and uh, textured and patterns on, on these, whether it's going to be an animal print or something. We'll kind of figure it out as we go. Okay, looking good. Uh, maybe right here we can, so maybe just fill in just a little more area right here. Go another W. <laughs> Actually, we'll just let that, we'll just let that drop right underneath that. So like this is a whole nother pattern that kind of slipped up underneath what we have here because this is going to connect to this this is going to connect to that so that's one color that's one color this is one color that slips up underneath there and that actually could be the same color as this uh, or we can make it different so you don't even need to decide now that's the cool thing is that's what more, most people get caught up in is like okay i got my 
purple done or I got my whatever done. I'm not even doing anything. I'm just trying to make something that looks cool. That's creating a section. So this is, so we got a V here, a V here. And then whether we wanted to have this one, you know, this could be like blue with purple textures in it. Or you could make it to where this is a color, that's a color that kind of slipped up underneath there, making it overlap, however wild you want to go, however many colors you want to use. Um, but once again, um, to kind of explain my point is I'm not deciding any of this now. I'm just trying to make something that looks good. Okay, let's see here. We will... Uh... You go there. I don't know. I'm so indecisive. <laughs> I'm just going to do a simple one. And we'll kind of drop this one underneath. Yeah. See how now this one, I'm, this one I'm talking about. See when you when you go over a style line like that, it'll look good in like it looks good there, right? Like that looks like that flows, you know, pretty good. But then once you turn it, you got like right. It just don't look right. So you, so it only catches you only you're catching bad angles on it because we're going over ridges. That's kind of the whole reason I want to stay away from that. Um, it, you would probably get away with it with this kind of design because, like I say, it goes everywhere. But it looks just looks like you've just laid the tape out bad. So instead of doing that, you know, we can always make the design around what we're working with. So we'll just go ahead and make this one fatter and follow that ridge. You know, looks a lot better. And then, uh, so we'll just go ahead and someone wants to know what's the best nozzle size for primer base color and clear in your opinion and why? Um, I think a one, three or one, four, cause you can use it all the way around. You know, it depends on your budget and what you're doing. I buy a one, three or a one, four to do everything. If you just want to buy one gun. I, I use mostly just one gun. The good thing to think about, like with primers and stuff, if they're thicker, you can just reduce them down a little bit with urethane reducer. That's what I do. Make them a little bit thinner and uh, you can spray them through smaller stuff, Some smaller nozzles. But definitely probably wouldn't go under a 1.3 unless you're doing just uh, helmets or tumblers or something. Then yeah, you could probably even get away with like thinning out all your paints with the with the reducer to be able to work out of even a 1.0 if you want to it all depends on what you're doing if you're doing big like restorations on a car like you're gonna need like you plan on spraying a whole car with primer laying it out thick so you can sand it down and fix all the imperfections well then you're gonna want like a bigger gun for that like a 1718 because the job is different you know it's different than what we're doing. What if you're doing small parts or big, big parts? Okay, that looks good enough for me. I mean, that's going to look pretty wild. We'll we'll decide what goes where here in a second. But um, so we have a panel here. We have uh, this this panel right here. We'll call them panels because I really don't even know what to call them. Um, that'll be kind of slip up underneath that, so that'll be a different color. Um, here's the background right here is, uh, another panel. And then this one right here is another panel. This would be the background, the same as that, right? So if these are all things or all chunks, this is the background we haven't covered yet. That's going to end up being our main color, our main background. We'll decide what that is here in a second. But, um, so that is the background there. Um, this connects to that one, like we said, and then 
here's another one that's probably going to be a uh, separate color than this kind of slip it up underneath that and we can get away with that you know because something flows over the top makes the transition to another color looks great um you know maybe if i was to do this for like a customer or something i'd probably do the same thing like here like here to try to make the colors look but this is going to be wild this is you're going to learn a lot here um it's going to look great but we'll go ahead and get on it this thing's pretty dirty for my gloves look at that Jeez, we're gonna it's gonna look great because what we're doing is we're gonna be splashing and doing all kinds of stuff on here okay let's get going someone wants to know if there's any chance uh you can demonstrate carbon fiber effect with silk liner and silver base trick yeah i think i have some yeah i've done it before yeah i think if you want to look in that bottom or that middle drawer right there if i have some i'll do it Okay, here's some white base coat. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with that first because we want these colors to be super bright. Um, you could just go straight over the black with those pigments, but this is gonna speed up the process and we don't have to lay down as much paint. You find it? You're in luck, sunny days. I found some. Okay, I got a, a lot of Neo. Works good for this stuff. Probably still has paint from last week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was terrible. It has a, actually, it has a chameleon in it. Because after I got done with that Frankenstein, I threw a chameleon over the top, seeing what it would do. Looked all right. Okay, we're just about cleaned out here. That's usually how I clean out my airbrush. I just have the reducer or the um, lacquer thinner. You're not really supposed to like bubble it up like that. It's a bad on your seals, but this is only like a $70 airbrush. And even if you are hard on it, it'll last like over a year still, even using it a ton. So I abuse my stuff a little bit. That's why I use the, the cheaper line. Cause you wouldn't want to treat an, a Micron like this. Cause it's like 600 bucks or something. This is only, like I said, $70. All right, so white base coat in the airbrush. By pouring that in there, I can tell that it's pretty thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of more reducer in there. Shake it up. Oh yeah, there we go. That's spraying nice. All right, let's get this out of the way. Okay, I had to turn on the exhaust fan because I won't be breathing all this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just um, kind of roughly go over the whole thing. But I am going to kind of put some textures into stuff. Kind of make it, um, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do that, but you'll see here in a second. Basically, we want to get this pretty well covered in, in white. I think my airbrush lid might be clogged. Oh, look at that. I just dripped right on it. It's okay. 
It's okay. We're gonna be just fine. <laughs> I'll just dab it just a little bit. Yeah, that's gonna be the polka dot. Let's not do that again, huh? <laughs> you did it, not me. Someone says, how did the paint not dry completely from that last week in the airbrush? If I did that, it would take forever to get it to York and again. Are we talking about that drip? The... No, the chameleon paint you had in there. Oh, oh yeah, to get it out? Yeah. yeah. He said, how did it not dry? Oh, it's uh, because it's solvent-based. It really stays good in there. You wouldn't want to do that with water-based paints. Like Cretex, don't leave that in your airbrush overnight. You got to clean it every time. But my lid is seriously the to no, let you guys know a technical thing. You can see it's spraying really good right now. And now I'm still spraying full blast, but it feels like I'm kind of running out of paint, but I'm not. Oh no, I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold up, hold up. Drag it. <laughs> Are you drinking my wine or am I? No. What's going on here? I'm on coffee. <laughs> Are you sure? Hey, that was an honest mistake. I didn't know I was out. <laughs> but anyways, let's see. I'm gonna have to change out my gloves again. I don't want to drip. The drip adds entertainment though. <laughs> it adds uh I don't know what it has. We don't want it. We don't have to get it all the way covered. I'm just gonna, just kind of like, once again, I'm just kind of do it in coats. I'm not really trying to get it all one spot and get it all finished. But that's looking good. Like I said, sometimes I'll go in here and I'll put textures like maybe this particular one will have a little more of a texture going like that. It's like putting an underpainting under it. It gives it a little more uh, detail, I guess. I don't know. I do it. Maybe it does do nothing and I just don't even know. But it has a little character, I think. Okay, that's good enough. That's all we need. It's not perfect, but it's white. We'll go ahead and rinse this out. All right, Let's see if we can mess anything else up. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Okay, it's a little glossy because I sprayed it on pretty fast. But uh, we'll let it just give it another second because we're gonna have to tape to this a little bit. So we don't wanna, you don't definitely don't wanna tape on top of wet paint. It's not a good idea. Turn that fan off. All right, what we're gonna do is the background first. Um, no reason why, we're just gonna do the background first. So I'm gonna, I know the background. So like I said, we broke this up into panels. This is a panel, this is its own panel. Um, this is not was what was created, you know, from the negative. So that's the background. This piece and this piece is the background because that's a panel. This is a panel. That's the background. And a uh, panel, panel that connects with this. Make sense? So uh, now we just need to choose the colors we're going to use. 
and um, also the textures and patterns that we want to do on this. So if you guys want to chime in, I know we're going to do carbon the carbon fiber. Let me look at that. Let me look at that. Right there, right there. Okay. Hopefully this is good. This, this might not be like the best man. I don't know. This I wish it was more open. Can we look for another one? No, I think we can make it work with this. I don't know. Yeah, that that looks like that'll look like carbon fiber. I haven't used this technique in a long time. So it was at the bottom of the drawer, huh? All crinkled up. Okay, we'll give it a shot. We'll probably do that in we wanna make sure since it's not like a uh like if that was like a big stencil that had big holes in it, you can get away with using colors that are less contrast. But since there's not a whole lot there to spray through, um, we want to use colors that have a lot of contrast, if that makes sense. So not using two colors together that are too close to the same. That way it doesn't even look like anything. But uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and take it. said zebra. Part. Yeah, zebra. I think that's what we're going to do. We have a couple of different uh, ones that look like zebra. No. Well, I don't know what they are. Only one of Stop drinking my wine. <laughs> What's happening here? Someone said splash style. Splash? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Like a mat. So we're just going to. Okay, so we're just going to protect that enough right there not to get overspray. And then. Uh, let me go ahead and grab some green tape right here. It's always nice to have different sizes of tape too. Like, cause right there, uh, we could have laid that down, but uh, we'll go in with the green right here. Because we do need to uh, not go, we don't want to go over that. Someone said lightning or wood grain. Wait a minute, am I doing that right? Hold on. No, I hold on, I did that wrong. Lightning or wood grain? Yeah, I like the wood grain idea. Lightning. Huh. Kind of like that, too. Okay, what am I doing here? Okay, here we go. So we're doing this area. I started taping off the wrong area. So see how that thinner tape works better? And you can hit this side. And now, because we're wanting to... We're wanting to paint this and this because that's both the same background. Okay, we're going to have to get this right here. So what we'll do is we'll line that up press it down you can kind of see the indent there and then where is my is that the way okay thank you where am i here oh yeah, right here let's go this way so i'm just going to trim this right here Yeah, easy. What about down by the V part? Yeah, so this and this. Oh, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, see? I need you around. I think my last one had overspray in that exact same spot that I did. <laughs> I know I did. In fact, I know it did. All right, so we got the background here, here. We covered that up, and this is still part of the background, so we're going to cover so, this up. Someone said, how do you know the paint is dry enough to apply tape to it? Um, Because it's not smudging when I touch it, and um, we applied it with an airbrush, so we know since I did that, I mean, it's going to dry pretty fast rather than a paint gun. But base coat dries fast. If it's applied correct... Uh, and not too wet and too fast, then it will dry in the matter of minutes with the airbrush. 
could be seconds if you're really light with it and do light coats. Okay, so that's our background, that's our background, that's the background, and then this is the last piece. That's part of that. So we'll go ahead and cut that out, and then there we go. Okay, that looks like that's right. Does that look right? Yeah. I like to use paper masking too, because unless you have to really tape to it the better because you are always risking pulling paint if you're taping on top of it usually don't have a problem but i don't know see that way we don't have to tape over all that just a little bit right there okay so we are going to do the zebra yeah we're going to do the zebra right here on this one though Carbon fiber, we'll probably put that somewhere. I don't know. We'll see for sure. But I think we have like probably, what do we have? One, two, three, four. We have a lot. We have six things or something. So we're going to be able to do a lot of different stuff. So this tinsel, so this whole, all these tinsel packs right here. Let me give you a look see. We have. The zebra. We have the uh, tiger. We have the wood grain. We talked about the wood grain. We have the cheetah. We have the lizard and the snake. And we do have a splatter one. Where is that at? Huh. We have a splatter one around here somewhere. I gotta find it. Well, anyways, back to it. We're gonna do this one. And the color combo we'll probably go with is, shoot, I might just go with, um, my plan was to go pink with it all, like just go pink and then put this over and then go purple. But I might, I might just go with the pink and white on this, right? That look good, you think? Pink and white? Yeah, that looks great. Then it'll keep it pretty light in the background let's try it that's different so we'll keep the white we're going to use the stencil spray some pink over it uh should be really easy so let's get the airbrush loaded up around here all the time you know how stupid i am <laughs> okay so i uh i've reduced it a little bit we're gonna go ahead and fill that up maybe a little more yeah pretty good Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna test it before we spray it. Make sure it's spraying okay. It's a little thick. Well, no, it's not too bad actually. All right, so we're going to have to break this up in a couple sections. So maybe we will, we can nail almost all of that. Let's see. Uh, maybe we'll do right here. Maybe we'll do. Here we go. We'll do this one and this one, and then we can move on from there. Maybe we'll use this end of the stencil. Just trying to see which way is going to look like if we run the the lines this way it, the lines are already kind of running that way so i kind of maybe want to cross it like that you know i like that look kind of just line it up to where i think it's going to look good 
and hopefully we're gonna hope for the best here we're gonna lightly get it with the pink not too crazy we can do more coats just got to hold it in the same spot Give it another coat here, make it a little brighter. Multiple passes. Because literally the, the 10 or 20 seconds it sits there in between is it's all flashing off because we're applying it with an airbrush. It's coming, it's going on really thin. So obviously it's going to dry faster. Okay, it looks pretty good. Needs to be a little, a little wetter out here. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Is that gonna look okay? Oh yeah. Okay. Else, it looks good. We'll also fade the edges too, so it's gonna really blend it in. So maybe since okay, so I went right. Let's see. Where was I at? Right. Right there. So maybe I'll just uh, I'll just come out just a little bit more. So that way we're kind of keeping the same flow there. All this is probably unnecessary. It's gonna look good no matter what, you know. Make sure I have enough. There we go. I can actually tell my airbrush is clogged just a little bit by the way it's spraying. But uh, considering what we're doing here, it's not going to really matter. Um, but I can tell that there's a little bit of tip dry just by hearing it and seeing the way it's kind of coming out. A little bit textured, but it's not going to matter. We're doing a print here, a zebra print. So a little bit of texture would probably even help. All right. So we got that. Take a look at that. Oh, yeah. And maybe we'll just finish this area off right here. It's a little bit splattery. I should probably fix that, but it's still working good enough. That's what I'm saying. Not everything needs to be perfect to to get good results. Like we've had an accident there. You can't even tell anymore. I hit it with lacquer thinner and messed up this whole edge. We were able to take care of that. But uh, before I do fade this, I am going to make sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure that top is clogged right there. The spray is good. Like I said, it'll spray good for a minute and it's like you're running out of paint. Um, but what you're actually doing is the pressure in there, it needs that little hole. You're actually running out of pressure. So it causes it to feel like that. Cause, and you'll know it because right when you pull off the cap and you spray it again, um, it'll spray good. Like. Like it is like, oh, it's like spraying crappy. You take off the cap and then you put it back on like, oh, it's spraying good again. Well, you know that that is clogged Ooh, right there. That's clogged with paint. I just need to stick something in there. All right. So let's go ahead and thin this out a little bit. Same pink. Fill it up just a little bit more. Thin it out just a little more. Okay, and then I'm gonna just fade the edges, edges in right there. Go ahead and pull this off. Just being careful. It's just a little bit wet still. Oh, a little overspray there. That's okay. Now we don't want to pull up 
our edging, our masking. Don't pull that up yet. We're just pulling off the uh, the inside masking. We don't want the, the actual pinstripe gone yet. But so far, so good. We haven't filled any paint. The white's still there. All right. Okay, that took a big chunk out of it. That's the background that's done. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to, uh, maybe we'll, we will do these two side panels. I don't know. So let's do it. So maybe we'll do the, uh, do the carbon fiber in these or in one of them we can just do it in one of them maybe in the other one we do something else okay there's that side we'll go ahead and do we're going to do this the same color but maybe a different pattern on the inside Okay, that looks pretty good. We got it masked up. Now we got to choose the colors. Um, well, like I said, we'll probably do the same color combo in this. Um, let's for sure go with, we'll start with yellow because if we start with a yellow base, we can always move to either a blue or we can move to a uh, green or we can, yeah, we can do couple different things so if we start with that lighter color yellow there's a little, we have a lot of options so we'll go ahead and do that first Okay, we have the bright yellow ready to go. It seems a little thick. Put some. Some more reducer in it to make it thinner. But we still want it pretty thick because it is yellow. You know, we want it to. We want it to cover. It gives people anxiety when you pour that over the. Uh, I want to make the mistake. Okay. Let me see how fast that covers really quick. Uh, I'm going to do. I haven't decided yet. Well, I know what we're going to do the. Um, what was it? Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber? Yeah. We're doing that. Will we do it in, we might have to do it in a different color though. We'll see how it looks. I'm not like super excited about that uh, stencil because I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's cool. Maybe it'd be cool. We'll see. Okay. That covered super fast. So that's our base color. We want to, we're going to combo this yellow up with another color. So I think the color would be either green or blue. Probably most likely we would want to go with green. Because, or you, or we could go with blue, and we'd have more contrast. I feel like green would be fine because the blue over the yellow is already going to kind of make it green. 
but we'll go ahead and stick with the green. Let's do that. Pour a little more reducer in that one as well. Someone said... Watch this right over the top. Don't do it. <laughs> Somebody said, random question, but do you know if Limeline is going to do a Black Friday sale? Uh, probably, yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah, for sure. On Amazon, 100%. Not a hundred percent discount. <laughs> That's a hundred percent discount on Black Friday. I listen to myself when I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Hundred percent. Okay. So we got the green. Spraying really good. I'm liking it. I'm gonna take um put this picture. There we go. We're gonna take this uh drawer liner. It kind of resembles carbon fiber. And we're going to lay it out nice and flat. <clears throat> you want to hold this over here, Ash, right there? Put your finger right there. Where? Right here. That way we can make sure it's down really good because we want this to to not be ghosted. Okay. That's it. That's all we're going to do. Hopefully it looks good. Is it going to look good? Oh, it looks pretty good. I like it. We need to fade those edges. Just take this same paint. Get the edges, kind of blend it into the center, fading it in. See, that looks, it makes it look so much better. I like that. Uh, I feel like, uh, yeah, we'll do something different over here just for the sake of it. But we could do that on the other side. That would look great, make things look even. Um, but, uh, well, we'll go with something else. Okay, so we already are loaded up with the, let's do, let's do blue. Let's do blue. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and. The patterns that people said was uh, snake, the wood grain, the slash, um, lightning. The lightning one's interesting. Um, but yeah, we can do any of those. We can do. Uh, let's do the wood grain in that other side, or. Uh, you know, maybe something that would match that a little better. Snake? Maybe the snake skin, because that would, this seems like it's a little bit different, but it's not too crazy to wear. We're doing it different colors anyway, so it's not going to matter. We're just, yeah, it's not going to matter. We do whatever we want. Someone said, um, do you have any advice on what colors not to use together? Yeah, so you, um, unless you're wanting brown, you're not wanting wanting to mix like uh, certain colors. Like, uh, so for instance, blue and yellow make green. Um, you wouldn't want to mix like a uh, a red in there. You know what I mean? So you're you're there's certain colors that aren't going to mix well. Blue and yellow make green so we can definitely do blue over yellow and it's going to be kind of a green it's going to be darker than this side um but if we were to use a am i correct on that a red yeah, if we were to use a red or on this it would it would start to turn it brown and it would start to mud it up so uh study up on the color wheel that's the best thing i can say i have to kind of remind myself sometimes and somebody asked what paint 
are you using? So I'm using the limeline pigment. So right now I'm using the blue. Here it is right here. I'm using the pigments mixed into clear base coat. This is the blue that I'm using. One scoop mixed with, what's so funny? I just left that comment, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you mix one scoop with one, one ounce. This comment is funny. It says, maybe it's just because I'm fat, but the carbon fiber reminds me of corn on the cob, but it still looks cool. <laughs> 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 it's hilarious. That looks like corn on the cob. God, really, it does. I can see that. For real. It's like a <laughs> stock of corn. It's funny. Okay, we got the blue loaded up, and we're going to do the snake skin. Go ahead and maybe let's see. Yeah, I kind of like this section right here. I like I really like what's going on there. So you can see I'm spraying blue over this, but it's gonna turn into a dark green. Because we're layering those two colors on top of each other. Oh yeah. Ooh, I sprayed it really wet right there. It's okay. You see how wet that is right there? You can see it glistening. So I'm just gonna fade the edges. Once again, I kind of do that on everything. Feel like it looks good. Kind of just blend it from the edges. I'm actually aiming for the tape. Like I'm actually spraying right on that into that orange, letting the overspray do its thing you know so look how nice that looks kind of blends it through yeah i'm liking the way this is gonna look here let's go ahead and peel that somebody asked someone said curious as to what color you end up with mixing the pink and the yellow um yeah so the pink the pink and the yellow so pink's pretty much like red you mix it's gonna be orange it's gonna be orangish we could try it but if we didn't already do the pink we could yeah yeah you we really you could spray like some of the gold on over that and then blend it in and it would give it like a completely different look there's a lot of stuff you can do as far as layering goes um putting one color over the top of the other you know you don't have to mix the two together you can just use the two colors but mix them on the canvas or whatever you're painting by spraying one coat over another But there we go. That's blue over over uh, yellow. So we, we definitely could have got away with just doing blue over here. It would have been just a tad bit darker. Okay. It's getting better. Let's see if we can mess something up here. Okay, what's next? Uh, we can do blue and purple. I do, we do have this area and this area, and then we'll probably leave. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, we actually have one, two. Let's go with, uh, let's see here. We can go with the, uh, hmm. Let's go with blue and then maybe purple. We already have blue loaded up. So let's go ahead and just do blue in this one right here. The orange? We've got orange. Oh yeah, we got orange. We'll go ahead and knock out this. We'll do this one blue right here. Blue and purple. So blue will be our first color. We spray down. And purple will be the textured of whatever we do. I wonder if I can do lightning bolts, but I'm kind of worried about that. I could do lightning bolts, I bet. I'm challenged. 
Somebody said, is that a tiny car hood or what are you making? That's just a tiny, it's just a, yeah, it's a ABS plastic car hood. Use it for practicing. That's what we use it for. Display. So, and literally you can paint one of these up like in an hour, hour and a half. And then you have a little display piece. Or you just practice on them. Okay, that was easy. So we're gonna do blue right here. And am I gonna do lightning bolts? Let's see. Yeah, I can do lightning bolts. Let's, we'll try it. Better take my hoodie off. Okay, this is gonna be easy. Let me go ahead and mask this off. Yeah. Yeah, that's like pretty 80s thing to do, right? Lightning bolts is definitely 80s thing to do. I'm gonna protect those because I'm gonna get all wild up in here. <laughs> Hopefully it don't look like trash. <laughs> I had to think about it. I'm like, am I gonna do this? That's okay. It's all like we could we could definitely do something else after over the top if we had to rewind it back out we would manage for sure the snow and purple <laughs> yeah i like that idea somebody else said he just commented and said that he is watching this and Taping off his helmet, he said that how good the lime line tape is. Oh yeah, right on. He's he's painting his helmet. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to do some lives like on maybe another night, like once a month, to where we can get a few people that paint at the same time, because we can yeah, load. Yeah, we could load on like literally like six people onto this platform, and all all you would need is my email address, and then the confirmation number to be able to log on, and then we could put you right on. So. Yeah, like a whole little community craft night. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, we can make it happen. So if you, now maybe we'll just th we'll we'll think about it a little bit more, and then uh, that'd talk be another night. It. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about it. Okay, I'm just gonna lightly kind of dust this because if I'm gonna do lightning bolts, I want this to. Get to uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just going to put blue down. Somebody said, did you design your tattoos? Uh, no, not really. I, I mean, I kind of told them what I wanted and where I wanted it. But uh, not necessarily. Have a really good guy. Okay, ran out of paint there. Get this dark enough so we have some pretty good contrast. What I'm gonna do is, so this will be the base color. Um, and I'm thinking here, so I'm probably gonna go with some purple over the top. Oh, is that too much? Mm -hmm. I'm not used to this. No. There we go. So we got some purple. Yeah, I sprayed that pretty wet right there. You can see that it's still. I'm going to take the airbrush and maybe dry it off. Oh, yeah, look at that purple. That's strong. Somebody said, saw a video of a guy who gold leafed his whole tank before applying the paint. Do you think that would peel eventually or would the paint seal it well enough? Uh, I think it would eventually have problems. But it all, I mean, 
a lot of this stuff you can end up having problems with, you know, because we're layering paint, we're breaking a lot of rules. So it's like, what are you painting it on? You know, if it's a helmet and 10 years down the road, it pills, I guess that's fine. You know, but if it's a car and then it pills in like six months, not fun. You know, you're building a show bike or you're building a road bike. I'm just going to go ahead and um, fade these edges in now. And I'll probably make like a little bit of a cloud texture. No, maybe not. I like the way this is blending. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the purple out. Okay, and so I got white base coat. We started with the white base coat. We're going back with the white base coat here. That's super thick. I can tell by pouring it in there. Like, you know that that's gonna come out like splattery. So we already know this is being tell so thick. We're gonna add some reducer to it. We're gonna thin it out a bunch. Gonna test it like we always do. Okay, you see how that's just like flooding out? Even if I pull back on the trigger even a little bit, see how fast that, it's like those freak dots we did a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but so you gotta be really cautious with your trigger because we don't, lightning don't look like that. Fireworks do, so we want fireworks. <laughs> yeah, like, hey man, that's just the, this is the 4th of July. Okay, so looks like my airbrush is. No, oh, I got a, I got a problem here. I got a. I actually have a bent needle. I have a little bit of a bent needle. We're gonna be fine though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I kind of straightened it back out right there, actually, with my fingernails. The problem is, is the paint was staying on. If it's because I had to reset the needle, pull it back, pull, loosen that, pull it back, push it back in. Voila, usually that fixes the problem. Because right when I pushed in on the air, it was letting a little bit of fluid out. Resetting that needle, gotta do that every once in a while. Okay, really thin, we gotta be careful. So we're gonna start right here. Let's see here. Whoa. Okay, what we're gonna do is, okay, we got really close on that and we kind of just made the center. Maybe we'll come off of this, whoa, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. Got a little crazy there. Got a little confident. But what we gotta do is we gotta fade this. See, I got real close right there. I was real close, made those really crisp. Now I'm gonna come back like a, a quite a ways. And it's kind of hard to tell because we're overhead view right now, but um, I'm gonna be back like that far, you know? 
not quite that far. That far. And I'm going to follow the same lines I did, but being super soft. And see how that's kind of giving it the halo? I'm going to, I want one more to come off of this. Maybe right. Ah, come on. There we go. Got it. And we're going to highlight all that. It's looking good. Especially the center where those like, where we have the fireworks right there. And that looks good. Oh yeah. See like it would get really bright right there. Like boom. That's looking really good. I like it. See, somebody has good ideas. We make them happen. I'm going to go ahead and um, put a little bit of blue over the top of this now. Let me go ahead and highlight it just a little bit more. Somebody wants you know. Somebody wants to know if you. They said, "Did you turn the needle in for those?" Did I uh, turn the, the needle? Did I do it? Turn it. Turn, I think you show how it bent. Yeah. No. I uh I pulled. What I did is I just pulled on it. I grabbed it with my fingers really hard and I just kind of kind of like when you're cleaning it you can literally like pull it straight they're pretty these are pretty flimsy someone said if you tended it very lightly in pink or purple would it add to the effect oh absolutely absolutely in fact that's a that's a fantastic idea I'm gonna do that gotta be a little careful I think maybe I'll just put a little bit of pink in with it and not go all crazy with the pink. Maybe go with the blue. And somebody um, said, have you ever taped out hot rod style pinstriping? Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, yes, I have. I have. It's not easy to do. <laughs> um, I see some guys at SEMA, they're doing it. They're doing it. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. But yeah, I'm a... Uh, I should probably practice that more. I could do. I can probably do it if I practice more. So that's what really what it comes down to is like, are you going to put in the time to learn it? You know, all of this like a lot of this is learning the action of pushing the airbrush down for the air and then back for the fluid. And once you get that motion down, it'll help you out a lot. So I'm just getting the white cleaned out of here, and then I'll put the blue, and then a little bit of pink. Let's see, where did my blue go? Where's the blue? Oh, that's right. Okay, blue. Yeah, we, yeah, that's good enough. A little bit of pink. Let's see what that looks like. That could be a little dangerous. Oh no, that looks fabulous. Let's do it. We're just gonna go and follow the same white we had, but we're just gonna be real light with it. We're just kind of pushing it back, you know, like making it a little bit darker. All right, that's looking great. Okay, we're gonna go back with white one more time. Real quick. Just dump that mixture out. Someone says they look forward to the videos every week. Gets them excited to paint. And then they said that added the icing to the cake. Looks sweet. Yeah, right on. Yeah, this is going to be cool because, you know, I don't, I hate to say no when somebody wants to see it, if it's going to turn out. And I was like, oh, okay, it's not what we were planning on doing, but now you know. Okay, so I'm going to get in here really, really close again. Kind of create like another bolt on top. Kind of following the same, a little bit different.
And then once again, just kind of back up, hit those right spots where they connect. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. What do you think of that? That turned out better than I thought. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Thank you for that, for that idea. That's awesome. Okay. So we will peel this and see where we're at. We're getting a lot closer here. Hope we don't peel no paint. No, nah, it's looking good. Ah, uh, yeah, that's gonna be a cool centerpiece. I like it. Once again, we're not gonna pull the edging. Yeah, because all this is gonna have that black. Everything that's under this is still that black we started with, which is awesome, because that's gonna cut, you know, make it nice and tight and give it a little, it definitely is gonna give it a better look because everything's gonna have that border on it. Yep. Yeah, so with the black once we peel this at the end, so wait till the end, because it's gonna be awesome. Uh, okay, so let's do the next one. Let's keep going here. Splatter. Yeah, we can do the splatter. I'll just have to find that stencil. Oh. That's okay. We can use. I have another one down there. If, if not, I'll it. Yeah. Okay. Let's do splatter. Let's Ooh, do. This thing's this is like splash. Yeah, that's a splash. Oh, we can do like splatter splatter. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, this is splash. Okay. Um, yep, we can do it. In what colors? That's what I'm wondering. In all the colors? Or what? The splatter? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not in all the colors. I don't think that's going to work. What color do you have left? Orange? We got, we can do, uh, we can, do, we can do yellow, orange. We can do yellow base, orange splatter drops, and then blue splatter drops as well. That'll make it kind of a green. What do you think of that? Yeah, I don't even know. I didn't visualize those those yeah. uh, turning out. I didn't turn out so good. So no, I knew I was gonna be able to do it. I mean, come on. It's not that hard. It's just lightning. You can literally, like, you can have seizures and have like, probably do, do it. Cover these. I don't know. You're not around all day. <laughs> I got some trash. Okay. Uh, right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why did I even tape that? Hmm. I didn't even have to tape right there, actually. It's okay. A little bit right there, and then a little bit. A little bit right here. Trim that. Oh. Whoa. It's a black pinstripe, we need that thing. Nothing, nothing going on here, nothing's going on here. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll get a little bit of masking to just to block this off instead of taping. Okay, I already forgot what we were doing here. Oh yeah, uh, yellow. 
Yellow is always a good one to start with because it's so light. You can do all kinds of colors on top. All right, so you want to mix your paint right on top of wherever you're working. So if you splash, because that's what we're doing here anyways. So you're just going to get ahead, right? <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to make a joke, Ash. Didn't work. Okay. Look how fast that covers. Check it out. Bam. That's bright. I was quick. Like once again, we're using the lime lime pigments. Not like we're trying to push it or nothing. But yeah, that's uh, that's great. That's good news. We got the bright color there. Now the question is, how do we do the splatter? I know I know there's a couple of different ways, and maybe I'll do them a bunch of different ways so that I know how, and then you can kind of that way at least you know, and then we all know what it looks like because this is nothing. This hood's nothing like important. It's just all practice. So what we learn here is would be better than doing something safe, I guess. Okay, so the first way would be to literally like drip it on. Like uh, you could take and just drip it straight on. We're not gonna do that one yet. Maybe we'll do something that's not quite as aggressive. We'll do some, uh, okay, so let's, we'll go ahead and load up some orange. We haven't even used orange yet. We'll going to load up some orange. And I don't know if you saw it, that was super thick. That was like some thick ass paint. So we're going to thin it down. Got to make sure we shake it up a little bit though, you know? Do if you could use the pigment with waterborne inner coat like Createx. Um yeah, you could. You could put it in their clear base coat and it would work just fine. Okay. That's looking good. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I have orange and the one way I do know how to do splatter um is if you were to so I'm pushing down for air and then you pull back for fluid. So if I wasn't to push down on the air and just like pump it like this, because I'm pulling the needle back, see? And see how I was loading up that tip with paint, orange paint. And then so it's going to load that up and then I'm going to take it and then I'm just going to blast the air on. Let's see if we can get this focused good. Let's see if we can see it. Oh, it didn't work that good. Let's get it loaded up again. Like I said, this is not real like aggressive, but what I'm doing is I'm just rocking back on the needle to get some orange on there and hitting. Let me, I'll do it a few times and then I'll get the, I'll get it closer to the camera so you can see what, uh, what's happening here. I think this is called stempling. In fact, I know it's called stempling. Oh, it's here. I'm just pulling back on the trigger, letting it uh, splatter once I hit the air on. Oh, there we go. That was a good one. Okay. Cool look. It's really, really fine detail. Let me. Let's get this to where y'all be see it. It doesn't look like much on camera, but it actually, I mean, there you go. See, it's just a stimple. All it is is, we're gonna do some other methods that, this is gonna be the finer detail of it. So this is like the background texture. That's one way you can do it. If you don't want it to be super aggressive, you can keep doing that um, over and over again. You could probably thicken your paint and maybe it would make bigger splatter. Just doing it more, I think, you know, really. And building it up. 
Okay, but uh, enough of that. We'll go ahead and hopefully you learned something there. Let's uh, let's see what what other. Let's see another technique would be. So if you take either a paint stick or one of these uh, stir sticks, break it. You take that and you hold it up next to your airbrush like this. And then you spray that edge. And what you're doing is you're spraying the edge and it's like splattering off onto, onto uh, wherever you're wanting the splatter to go. So I haven't done this in a while, so hopefully this works. Oh yeah, see that's working. Do pretty much the same thing, just faster. Oh yeah, great idea. Oh, I'm liking that. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to blend this in. The, um, putting another color on there, I don't know if that's a good idea because uh, any color like brown or, or uh, any color like blue or something is going to turn it brown. Um, I like the way this is looking. I think it just needs to have the, once again, the edges to be faded. Not that kind of faded, Ashley. All right, see how nice that looks when it's just kind of blended into the center? Yeah, that looks... Once we pull the tape, it's going to look even better. There's other ways you can do the splatter you can get a splatter stencil um you can literally drop Ooh, why did i do that i touched right there let me go ahead and... yeah so i'm working too fast you know oh yeah now it's real wet oh yeah a pencil yeah huh. Okay, well, so far so good. We're not peeling any paint. stripes there we go see how that just drops right underneath that Whoop. right underneath that that's such a i mean you could do that more like we could have totally brought something in and brought it through here again making it even better but uh it's already so good i'm loving it okay we have two more spots and we're just about done um we'll go ahead and leave this masked up for the time being because we're gonna have to mask up a little bit this way I, I do want to wait just a little bit longer on that. Maybe mask up this first. I actually wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind having that same uh, yellow orange right here in another pattern. I feel like that would like maybe this one came off the edge and shot up on in that thing. So it actually looks kind of like the same thing. Unless you can think of something else. What do you think, Ash? I mean. I mean, pink and purple, just kind of too close to those two. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a good thing to do. That's a, that's a nice thing about you know trying to choosing your colors as you go. You can kind of decide as you go. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to say this is how you're gonna do it, and sometimes it gets too confusing at that point. You know, and then you give up.
Oh, what am I doing here? That's good. Someone said water drops on the orange on the right side. Water drops. Um, yeah, we did water drops the last week, right? Yeah, the, a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, we could do that. I mean, we are kind of already done it. I'm trying to think of anything else. I know we did mention wood grain. I like the look of that. Let's go ahead and get the yellow on there first and we'll we'll talk about it, huh? <laughs> we get the orange out. Let's see. Oh, pink and purple. I'd say that's too close to the orange and the red. We already have right there. We have those honeycombs. We do have the cheetah too. Kind of yeah, the cheetah is kind of a it's kind of a small area for the cheetah. Honeycomb. The honeycomb would be cool. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cool look. I mean, but then uh, that's going to take me a minute to line that up, you know. <laughs> okay. the slash. Let's do the slash marks. That'll kind of match the orange on the other side too. Yeah, we can do marble. Let's get the yellow down. Okay, there's that. Let that dry. I like the idea of the uh, of the marbleized. I like to, and maybe we'll do it. Maybe we'll do it the a uh, little bit different way. Hopefully, this plastic works. Just taking a piece of plastic like that. Like, I mean, the last time we did it, we stamped it. Like, we literally just got it wet and we just went stamp, stamp, stamp. And that's a look. But I feel like if you do it this way, and if we can do it right, it's a better, it's a way better look. I need to make this thing flat, though. I'm not going to have nothing left here. Okay. <laughs> there we go. This is exactly what I want. This is exactly what I want. A piece like that. Okay. And then we want it really wrinkled. Okay. I think this is going to work. All right, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna put some orange in here. I mean, really, like straight up ceram wrap is the best, but pretty sure it's gonna work. Okay, so orange over reduced. And we're just gonna spray the hell out of this thing, like on the whole, the whole thing. And we want to get it. We want it to be real wet. And then we're gonna. 
slightly just put it over the top. Ooh, don't move it. And then you just use the air to, to kind of blow it in there, you know? Doing it this way, it creates like the vines all the way through. When you stamp it, it looks too uniform. And it still looks good. Okay. Kind of get that. So it's touching. All right. Here goes nothing. Oh, that looks not very good. Mm -hmm. I could stamp it. I'm going to leave it though. What it did is I got it too wet. And, uh, and it uh, got into the white. Uh, yeah, that didn't work as well as I thought. That's not as good as the lightning bolts. But you're right, I probably should stand it, but not with that piece. Oh uh, yeah, it was just too wet. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna stand. Where, uh, that actually might not look too bad, you know? Let me just kind of blend this in. Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that we put white base coat on it, that the orange was uh, so thick, maybe I shouldn't have sprayed it so wet, that it um, it just stuck to that white and pulled that white off, and you could see a little bit of the black. But this is actually going to still look really good. Like once that paint dries, like tomorrow, <laughs> uh, it'll uh, it'll be red. It'll it'll still look good. I have a heat gun right here. I could heat it up, but we'll just let it sit. Oh yeah, that's not that bad at all. That looks great. What was I talking about? Once the rest of the pinstripes come off, this is gonna look amazing. All right, we got one more spot, right? We got that one done. Yeah, so this one right here. Maybe we will, uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and tape this off. Yeah, where did my tape go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, blue would look great right there. Blue. So blue and purple. Let's do that. Okay, what do we got here? We have the orange. So since we already have like the yellow and orange going on over here, it'd be nice to have, yeah, the blue and purple. I feel like the purple didn't get enough attention, right? It just got a little bit in with the the fade in the blue. All right, so blue base coat. Somebody said that he's really surprised how good of coverage that yellow gives. Yeah. And you could, the nice thing about these pigments is you can mix them more potent than, uh, than you, I mean, if you, if you want it to cover faster, you can just always do like an extra half a scoop or something. And those, uh, the link to all those, and I might as well explain that here in the middle here. Um, the link to the little kits that have the base coat, it's, you'll be able to find it down in the description, but yeah, it comes with the pigment that's going to make up to 12 um ounces even more it depends on what you're doing uh and it comes with that measuring spoon and the like three or four filters it comes in there with it that way you're ready to go you know all you need is a little bit of, you need some cups 
You need some clear base coat and some reducer and some stir sticks and an airbrush and a panel and some tape and a little compressor and maybe some sandpaper and some masking tape and you're pretty dang close to being get, doing all this. So it's not even that much. I'll hit that one more time. Let's see, am I out of paint here? Yes. A little bit more blue. Okay, take that, add a little purple. See, it's starting to get really thick right there because it's been sitting out. A little bit of reducer. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just drying this with some air because I did blast it on there pretty wet. And I, when I put the stencil down, I don't want it to mess up that blue. Okay, that's feeling good. All right, the slash. This is also part of that kit that has all the animal prints. Um, has that, and then what else we do? And then the zebra right there, snake skin. Um, a few others, yep, wood grain. It all comes in a pack. Okay, this is nice and purple. That looks great. So I'm just going to look for the, you know, the kind of styling I want on there. I could have that kind of rip straight down. Um, this could kind of go across like that. But I think I'll go, I like how this kind of X's out. So I'll go ahead and use that. That's the what? My cool lightning? No. Do I need to tape it off? No, I'm good. I'm good. Whoa. I had butted. Okay. Whoa, I did it again. This is intense. Okay. Bam. A little bit more right here. Bam. Oh yeah. And then we do a little bit of the fade. Just rocking the trigger back just gently. Fade that into the center. Okay, that looks good. We'll go ahead and pull. Pull the masking off and then I think we're ready to go start pulling these pinstripes off. One thing I am gonna do real quick, what do I have in here? Purple? That's perfect. So now I have purple in here. Um, I do wanna put a drop shadow like on this whole thing right here. Like I want this to look like it's uh, like that's dipping under quite a bit so let me get over here in a good position and all I'm gonna do is just run a little bit of purple paint right there and see I kind of stayed off the edge just a little bit I mean now that looks like it's especially when the pinstripes are off that's gonna look like that's dropped right underneath that causing that to shadow same thing with this same thing the light source so my light source right now is right here over this way and it's good it's uh you know it could be actually it's more like this way right here so it's casting that shadow kind of making it lift off same thing right here because we're not going to want to put a shadow on this side because we already put a shadow on this side so there's not two shadows it's already here we wouldn't have it here even though that's a great place for a shadow too it just doesn't no it just doesn't look right not natural but this is gonna have a shadow you see that we're just 
settle that a little bit. Same thing with this one. If that's going to be overlapped. And then, let's see, we'll do this one right here. And then let's see if we can get away with doing one right here. One right here. Well, yeah. Okay, you see how that, um, you know, kind of turned it brown? You know, it looks pretty dark right there. That's because we're spraying, um, you know, purple on top of colors we probably shouldn't be spraying on. So that's what it does. That looks fine, though, because that's a drop shadow. But, like, if you were to use that as, like, a, your splatter, then it's going to look brown. But there it is without pulling the line. So let's go ahead and start that see what it looks like see if I got any overspray where we hold our breath don't peel watch this one that's gonna be on the highlight reel right there boom oh maybe not what's that it's not too bad if this is like a this is like a customer's bike and we would clear it at this point and then come back after it's cleared we would sand it and then uh, touch up that with the black tape it off that's what i would do at least see that didn't turn out that bad that's that uh it looks more like splatter than it does marbleized but we didn't ruin it for sure. We could um, actually scrape that clean. Let's go ahead and see if we can do that. I'll go maybe this side. See so yeah, we can just kind of clean it up. Because this is just the plastic that we're working on. I mean, that's not perfect, but that's better. It's one method to clean this stuff up. I think I got, what else do I got to pull here? Oh, right here. Come on, it's always the last one. There we go. Got a little bit of piece right there. All right, not bad. That actually turned out really cool. I love the lightning. That was actually, that's actually my favorite thing on there. So cool. All right, so yeah, just a recap of what we did uh, real quick. And if you guys have any final questions, go ahead and 
answer them and then we'll we'll finish off with the the last of the questions but i'll kind of recap everything we did here so i started with the black uh base uh, plastic scuffed it up with a 600 grit pad uh cleaned it with glass cleaner i used the eighth inch uh lime line uh tape taped out my design kind of creating the panels um, and then the background of all the negative space would be th what we have here um going moving on to that we did spray down we taped off and sprayed down the back layer with uh pink the lime lime base coat pigment that we mixed in with clear base coat i was sprayed that over that after it was masked up through the stencil unmasked what did we do next we did both both the edges uh we did some of a carbon fiber faux finish with a the drawer material um it looks good i would probably would have like turned that uh the other way or something maybe a different direction i don't know it looks great it looks good i'm just kind of critiquing it now uh and then we went on and we tried to do we did the splatter that turned out pretty good by uh starting out with the yellow base coat and we uh mixed up some of the orange bright base coat and did a couple different techniques with the you know spraying um as far as pushing down the trigger and letting it splatter through the airbrush we also used the paint stick um, method as well and then we once again we faded all the edges with the orange we did do the awesome looking you know I, we could even do more detail into this and look even better like clouds in the background that's pretty simple i like it though uh, but we used uh we started with the blue base on that the bright blue base we went back to the white to create the really tight uh lightning marks kind of connect them in the center we we then took the same white over reduced it a little bit more and kind of just gently fogged in what the what like you know the after lighting i guess or the backlit lighting um, after that we went and hit it with a little bit of a pink purple mixture and then back to the white one more time hitting it tight and close to kind of giving it double line and uh, a couple of the bright hitting the bright spots where they kind of meet in the middle and that's about it that's all we did on that that's super easy technique looks really cool uh, here we use the splatter with the blue here we used the uh, that was blue and purple this where we use the yellow and the green with the lizard and that's it that was actually that was pretty quick that was pretty quick turned out real nice um but yeah any final questions we'll, we'll take, take them, them now and then that's it for us someone asked if you used adhesion promoter on the panels yeah you don't have to on these um as long as you scuff them up but um that that is you can do that as well that's it okay so awesome all right guys um that's it we'll see you guys so usually we do these on thursdays today's wednesday we're going to see him tomorrow so that's why we're doing it today but uh we'll definitely see you guys next week we also talked a little bit about real quick about maybe having uh a night where we can get multiple people painting at the same time where we could just you know talk shit and just talk about paint and whatever and other people can join in um let me know hit me up on instagram if that sounds interesting to you i can get a list of like at least a couple of people so it's you know not all weird like you know just me and one other person <laughs> well there's always people that, that join in but that's great man i mean uh let me know hit me up on instagram dm me and then we can get you those contact details and it's as easy as as easy as just setting up your phone on a tripod um, and then you're going to be able to stream right through the platform. So you're not going to need any fancy equipment. You just need an iPhone um, and you're good to go. Maybe some good lighting. But uh, okay, that's all the questions. Appreciate you guys all being here. We'll see you guys next Thursday.